Hi, this is Tolik for the Andromeda Council. Today is Friday, August the 26th, 2016. And I am blessed and honored to have with me Itasha Tashina, who will be one of the speakers for the upcoming 2016 Transformational Shift Conference, which is going to be taking place the weekend of October the 21st through the 23rd uh, this year. Uh, down in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, I'm going to be uh, introducing her and reading a bit of her bio, but before I do that, Tashina, how are you? How uh, how are you doing after that long walk across the country? Oh, very accelerated and very happy to be here with you and everyone else today, Talek. Thank you. Well, th thank you for, for taking a few moments out of your day to... Uh, to introduce to your, yourself to people and, and share a bit of who you are and, and what you've experienced on this this world and and some of the topics that you'll talk you'll be talking about at the conference. So as a, a bit of an introduction, uh, Itasha Tashina is a sun dancer and sacred pipe uh, Chanupa holder. Her walk has been many years in sacred spaces, learning, teaching, and healing. Mount Shasta, the Dakotas, the Cascades, the White Mountains, the Blue Mountains have been her home. She's a history, anthropology, and Spanish teacher. Her most important beloved job is of a grandmother and mother. She has written and performed poetry, songs, and dances for native images at ASU in Arizona, as a healer and Azteca dancer, clairvoyant, and telepath. Since birth, Tashina has been trained by and interacted with star beings, angels, spiritual guides. She has deep Apache and Arcturian connections. Her life has been a gift. She says, it's a joy to be here in this world. And I think that's a, I think those closing words are, are a great introduction to you. Um, I certainly hear the, uh, the joy and the intelligence in, in your voice as we've talked and shared our, our mutual stories over, over a variety of phone calls as we've gotten to know each other. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn the session over to you and, and allow you to uh, share uh, some things about yourself and, and some of the topics that you'll be talking about, those things that are, that are most important to you in your life these days. Blessings and greetings on behalf of all the star nations and all beings in the blessed sacred way. Thank you so much. Um, I'm very honored to be amongst you and to be able to be here in the world at this time. Uh, it is this soul, the spirit's perception that this is a very sacred time for this planet and that it is a time when we all need to come together. And even though we hear that said so often, um, at this time it is happening. And that is how I see my journey in this planetary system. Um, the title of what I'm going to be doing at the conference is basically the role of the star nations and their interactions with the people here and with the indigenous people and addressing the way that we are transitioning to new ways that are built up on old ways and the fact that they aren't really so very old because we've been practicing these ways often without being aware of it. A lot of people right now, they say they're awakening and yet it's more of a reawakening because deep in their souls they know who they are and when they see that reflected as we've spoken with each other in the eyes of another person and the soul of another person they go, wait a minute you're not so very different from mm. me or wait a minute uh, that's my story that's your story and the truth is it's our story so we're making a big shift right now. This is what the shift is from the you versus me into the we. 
and, and that's what humanity here in this planetary system is experiencing and it feels a little strange because it's almost like will I lose myself in you will I lose the me and the essence of who I am and the reality is that that very essence comes from the stars we all came from the stars and as we reawaken to that and that essence and that remembrance it is a remembrance it is a reawakening it becomes for some very glorious for others it's almost traumatic yeah <laughs> and so at this time with the recognition that not everyone is experiencing these changes in the same way um, helpers of all kinds are needed and that's why the star nations are making such a visible visible uh, appearance at this time and that's why so many people are coming forth as healers you've heard the term calling all angels I would say at this time calling all healers calling all spiritual teachers hello all of you out there you are needed at this time more than ever. well as as the uh as the Oyate, as the Lakota so appropriately say, Midakuye Oyasin, which is, you know, began as all my relations. And I believe the contemporary meaning is we are all one. And as you indicated regarding your walk across this country, you heard and learned many stories about people sharing, sharing their stories, their lives, and how, in fact, so many of those stories are similar. Yes, indeed. Um, I've returned from the longest walk five. I did not go to every single state. Um, some people did. Uh, most people did not. We went to states that we were able to walk through. Some of us ran. And then we convened at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. in July. And as we went through these states, uh, we went through New Mexico, we went through Oklahoma, we went through Florida, <laughs> we went through the Carolinas, um, Virginia, uh, we went through quite a few places, Louisiana. And in each place that we went, we went into the communities and we met with people and we prayed with people and we did ceremony with people and we went into their homes we went into their schools we went into their health facilities we sat and we listened to them and many people cried mm -hmm. and they said you know we didn't think anybody cared no one has ever listened to us uh. so the main thing that I came away from this walk with is we need to start sharing our stories. We need to start listening to people and to each other and realizing that this is part of the healing. This is part of how the healing goes. The old talk circles that we had, the healing circles, we need to get humanity talking. We need to bring this big worldwide circle of humanity together. And that's quite a task. So the way to do that is starting with the building of small circles and interconnecting these circles and realizing that each circle brings something to the larger circle. We each are different in some ways we're all alike yet we have a unique gift so as each person realizes this unique gift that they bring to the circle they can be proud they can have dignity they can have honor and this is how the spirituality grows i i would i believe that there was probably a lot of healing going on as these these circles were coming together as you traveled these different states I, I can tell by the, the the energy in your voice that it was uh, probably an incredible 
and sacred journey because of all the lives that you touched? It was incredibly sacred. It was amazing um, to see America, to see the people, to hug them, to touch them, to laugh with them, to eat with them, to cry with them. Mm. This is what it is about. As we are making this shift, if you will, into a multiverse or ascension, whatever anyone chooses to sure. call it, we, we all have so much knowledge and we have many of us much wisdom. The people that I met, the thousands of people, thousands, not one or two or hundred thousands, what everyone had in common was the desire to be with others. And I can't stress this enough. So we need to come out of our shells and we need to understand that, you know, cell phones are nice, Facebook is great, um, all of these things are very nice. Yet we have to come and be with people. Um, many people laughed at the Pokemon thing, and I have no <laughs> comments mm -hmm. <laughs> that possibly the goal was to get people to come out in the open. Yeah. So the star nations are coming out in the open, <laughs> and we are doing it a lot with the indigenous people because they were the original caretakers. And I say that in the sense that the indigenous aboriginal peoples of this planet, they go all across this globe. You have the Sami, you have the Laplanders, you have the aboriginals in Australia, you have the indigenous people everywhere you go, in Ireland, in England, wherever these people are, they were entrusted with the star codes. They were entrusted with the caretaking of the earth. Because when people say, how am I supposed to do this? And everyone goes running for the latest book they have read. The problem with that is that book may have some energy, yes, but it only has the energy that is transmitted from a person to another person. And if we leave that piece of paper as a one-dimensional or two-dimensional object and we don't connect with our fellow humans and then we say we wish to connect with the star nations or we wish to connect with creator source, it is impossible. So I kind of wrote an outline of how the star nations see things. And yes, I'll explain why I would address myself as from the star nations. Okay. <laughs> the first one that they gave me, and I didn't come up with this, they gave this to me prior to the show, is, first of all, do you wish for us to show up? Secondly, if we show up, are you listening? <laughs> Important question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thirdly, if you're listening... And we, if we show up and you're listening, are you actually open to implementing these new ways? Or were you just curious and now you will go back to bed? Um. <laughs> so the universe says have built free will into all sentient beings of life, all forms of life. And the free will is to choose to partake or not, to... The situation with the star nations and with higher creator source is that all will go forward regardless. So, basically, the spiritual teachers and the healers that are so needed right now, they are needed in order to help guide this process, heal this trauma, and reteach people that which they already know. Not only that they already know, but I think for many, 
since they've been so uh, encoded or programmed in this modern society that, that we live in, so many of them have forgotten that they are themselves sacred beings, that they themselves come from the stars, that they are uh, unique individuated creations of of Wakandanka, of, of creation, of great mystery. Each one of us is an amazing light being. There are many blessings coming as people are beginning to heal, uh, beginning to, and I don't know if you, you touched on this, but you know certainly an important element of, of the process of healing is people forgiving themselves. And that's... Yeah. That's something that I think sometimes people overlook. They go, oh, I need to forgive him or her, and I need to move on with them in my life. But if they don't forgive themselves, step one, there's always that residual pain that they carry. And that is so very true. Yeah. On, on the walk, uh, we dealt with dealing the trauma of domestic violence, oh. drug, and alcohol oh. abuse. And as we worked with people we found that often the reason that people aren't, as you said, in so much pain is there's a shame. And sometimes it's almost a generational shame uh. where they may not themselves have done something, but they carry that shame from someone else that might have done something. And we often take upon ourselves the pain of others and we carry that and in the releasing of this pain we have to be able to forgive others and also forgive ourselves and realize that we are not the cause of some of these pains we might have inherited these pains oh. That, that's a good point. Um, are you talking about inherited, that these bodies, if you will, are inheriting yeah. the pains from other lifetimes? Correct. Okay. And, and, and from other things that have been done to humanity, humanity has suffered greatly. And often we go about our daily lives with a smile and we do our very best, and yet we do it within a world that is in pain. So it, it's almost an unconscious thing. It's like a tight shoe that you don't want to take off because you're not sure if you have another pair is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this garment that we wear, these bodies that we wear, this genetic coding that is a part of us, we need to heal this. And this forgiveness, there's a process that we have to go through to forgive ourselves and to do others. And it is a very deep type of a healing that goes to the very heart, the very essence of who we are. And many of the healers that are coming in are trained in the healing of the genetic coding of humanity. So basically there's a recoding that needs to take place at a very deep level, a subliminal level. Mm. Because surfacely the shoe looks nice, but the foot inside hurts. We look very beautiful, we have our smiles, but the soul cries and we don't want to cry publicly because we are ashamed so understanding that this shame is not ours and ridding ourselves of this and this forgiveness process the release of this shame the release of this pain is the healing that comes through the recoding at this deep level and this recoding can be done, as many healers know, through a multitude of ways. And this is where the trained healers 
are being called. Would it be accurate to say that at some moment after a person is able to process, uh, release, transmute this pain that they've been carrying either for this lifetime or other lifetimes, that after that happens, that's when the ability to truly love self begins and, and then, of course, love others? Absolutely. And, I, and, and you, you, you hit right on the, the topic, loving ourselves and therefore having the ability to love others, accepting ourselves as the beautiful beings of light that we are. So we have the star nations that have come to assist in this. Uh, this is a very old story, as you know. Um, humanity has suffered for millennia. And there have been many things that have happened in this planetary system that caused this suffering. And yet people did not know the stories. Many of the stories are now coming out into the open of how did we get to be who we are? How did this get passed on from generation to generation? How did we live the lie? How did we become so traumatized? How do we now go forward? So we have this teachable moment in, in this reawakening process. And we have all of the guides, all of the angels, all of the archangels, all of the old cold carriers, if you will. We have the indigenous people, the aboriginal people of this planet stepping forward carrying their gifts, their bundles, their ceremonies, their songs, and gifting them. And we have the star nations coming, riding on the skies, if you will, on the clouds, yes. with many, many, many messages. And, oh dear, my computer might shut off, and I'm trying to get it to not do this. <laughs> it's okay. I, I will do my best to keep this page open. Um, so basically, for myself and for many of us, uh, I am here as a messenger, I am here as an ambassador, and I carry these codes and have come at this time to assist in this healing process and to give this information. And as my dear friend Bear Cloud said when someone asked, how would you say who she is? And he looked at me and he said, she is a bridge from her world to ours. And that is why I'm here, to be a bridge from the Star Nations to my family here in this world, at this time, in this place. Wow, so very well said. Um, I can tell you as I travel this country, and uh, as I mentioned, I'm in Colorado right now. Um, met people recently last night, 35 some odd people. And when I told them of this conference that's coming up in Tucson, when I mentioned your name, I saw many eyes light up with recognition and joy. <laughs> really, <laughs> knowing knowing that that you, um, someone who is truly a, a star person of Arcturian and Apache heritage, that you would be coming to speak and share share your knowledge at this conference. There were a lot of happy and excited people. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm sharing this with you to let you know that your your work, your name and your work has, has been recognized, even in the smallest of circles. And that's that's a good thing. And so I, uh, from my side, I feel blessed that you'll be joining us at this conference. So, th so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Honor and gratitude. And um, if you could see me now, I, I have a smile, and and um, it's kind of funny because I do sunburn and I do blush, and I think I'm blushing. Thank you. <laughs> Won't be last. <laughs> you are you are very welcome. Well, this is this has been a a, a wonderful. Mm, teaser, if you will, to let people 
um, sort of peek behind uh, the curtain and into the life of uh, Tashina and all of the ways that she's able to touch the people. Um, this is Tolik for the Andromeda Council, and we are talking to Tashina uh, regarding her uh, her upcoming um, speaking and teaching at the Transformational Shift Conference in Tucson, Arizona, the weekend of October the 21st through the 23rd, and it will take place at the Doubletree by Hilton Hotel Reed Park. And for any of those who are thinking of joining us, um, please do join us. Understand that there will be many gifted people there, including uh, Tashina, as well as Grandmother Silverstar, as well as uh, uh, Kathy Wilkitz from the Cheyenne River Reservation, as well as uh, uh, Adana, Silver Wolf Spirit, we will have an incredible Native American presence and an ability to learn from their gifts at this conference. So, Tashina, thank you for being one of the people who will be contributing to this really special event. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, deep honor and respect to you, Talek, and to the Andromeda Council, and to all the beautiful people in this circle. And I'm very excited. Thank you so much. Uh, Wopila. Okay. Wopila. And to everyone else out there, uh, Pile Mayayelo, uh, thank you for listening, and we hope to see you in October. Take care.